Uh, yeah, nice. Uh, good afternoon or good morning. Thanks for everyone for coming out to Suffolk County. Uh, as you see, it you know it was a typical a, a court conference uh, with a case like this. It's not exciting, but it's necessary. Uh, the parties, we you know, uh, defense and prosecution, we worked out some logistics with regards to the protective order, with regard to discovery. Uh, we provided a number of items of discovery. Uh, 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 not not only you know prior to the court appearance, but at the court appearance, uh, we'll continue to provide that discovery on a rolling basis. And the next court date is uh, November fifteenth. What's the protective can you go, Mr. Tanner, can you talk about explain uh, what Mr. Santo Santo Martino said in court that apparently there's a match between the DNA on the pizza crust and the buccal swab you took for Mr. Hewerman and explain the significance of that. Sure. So that was uh, that was provided. Um, you know that was provided today that the data uh, and the reports uh, pertaining to that that aspect so as everyone I think knows that there was an abandonment sample obtained uh, from the defendant uh, via the pizza box and the pizza that was in the pizza box a DNA profile was obtained from that pizza um, subsequent to the defendant's arrest a buccal swab was taken of the defendant a DNA profile was obtained from that buccal swab and the buccal swab of the defendant Take, uh, matches the DNA profile from that of the in the abandonment sample in the pizza box. When you just hear about the more... swab to the hair, when are we going to hear about the swab to the hair that was found on this waterman? That was the other thing that you guys said you want, you needed the swab for, was to run that analysis. Well, I mean, I think it's going to be the same thing because the the uh, the, the the pizza box and the the, the buccal swab are the same. It's the same profile. Can you go over exactly what was handed over? I mean, it's it's uh, over, uh, I think, 5,000 uh, 5, pages of material. So uh, primarily grand jury material, uh, grand jury reports, grand jury exhibits, um, that, that sort of stuff. And the exhibits included uh, video walkthroughs, uh, footage from the car, the memo books. Can you go through that, the storage unit? So, um, you know, I, 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 it's it's just a, a voluminous amount of stuff, and we're we're providing it on a rolling basis. So, um, you know, it's just it's it's an it's a continuing process. Is this the first time you've spoken before today? Um, probably, yeah. The attorney, just to clarify, you have the Google swab. It matches the pizza crust. It doesn't match the hair that's on Megan Waterman's body from the Google swab. So that that analysis doesn't change anything that's in our bail letter. But can you confirm that in the past it, it matched? Well, well, you're using the term match. It's consistent with. Okay. Yeah. And 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 then there's a, a ratio, a probability that's provided. So that that would just confirm all all of that which is contained in the uh, in the bail report, bail letter. Swab increase the ratio, increase the probability. No. So in, 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 in all cases, really, you have a, a protective order with a number of um, um, conditions in the protective order. Uh, really, the most important one is that uh, the material that is provided is not provided to the media. So uh, that was so there, there are terms and conditions in the uh, in all protective orders and that you go through a, a, a series of just working with the court working with defense counsel to uh, hammer out language that works for everybody so sometimes you have to make slight modifications and, and that's that's what we did in this case and in in this uh, specific case there was a watermark that the uh, the defense found unwieldy so they asked and we complied and, and removed the watermark the, um, the mention of the amount of time he's got to or the amount of time he's able to review these uh, this discovery two to three hours based on that as long as uh, you know that being uh, how long he can sit and, and do this on a daily basis how long do you think it's going to take him to get through all the discovery that well said so he says it's up to four hours and um, sit for two or three. Uh, and so, uh, again, that's something that uh, it, you know the defense does but you know the, the um, it's given to the, you know, the, the material is given to uh, his counsel, and then, you know, his counsel chooses how they review it, who they review it with, and, and, and you know, the methodology behind that. So we'll just leave that to Are them. Are you feeling stronger about the case now, now that this, the DNA has come back? I mean, I think this is sort of a, is this not a monumental development, or did you know this was? Not at all. 
Okay. We were very confident that this was going to be the case. Um, you know, when you look at a case, um, there are things that we as a prosecution team expect. Uh, and, you know, the, 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 the way the case is, is unfolding, you know, is consistent with our expectations. So uh, that's, that's good. You mentioned the watermark that you put on some of the evidence. Were you worried that there would be leaks? There haven't been any, apparently, to the media. Like, were you worried about that? Is that what Well, I mean, I think you're always, you're always worried about leaks. You're always worrying about maintaining grand jury um, uh, secrecy, uh, grand jury privilege, uh, privacy rights of, of individuals. So what you do is you do a balancing act, uh, and uh, you know between between everyone, between the prosecution team, between the defense team, between the court, uh, and and their team. Uh, so this is just this is uh, you know something that you worry about in general. But I had no specific uh, worries, uh, you know, in this in this instance. There's a lot of material that we have to provide to the defense. Uh, we uh, appreciate the cooperation of not only the defense but the court uh, because, you know, you can't just, you know, you have to provide the material in such a way that's coherent so they can follow it along. Uh, it helps them, uh, but it also helps us so we are able to memorialize and show that every single piece of, of paper and, and document in this case has been provided to the defense because that's certainly important not only for the trial but for uh, an, an appellate record as well. So uh, it's it's not something, you know, you don't take a 13-year uh, investigation and, and turn it over in a day or two. So we certainly appreciate uh, the, the, the cooperation uh, that the end that we're, we're receiving from, um, you know, the court and, and the defense. Are you, are you any closer to additional charges? We're we're still you know we're still investigate our investigation is continuing and when we're uh, prepared to announce uh, charges if that day comes we'll do it in court. What will happen on November 15th? Sorry. What will happen on November 15th? Just basically what you see here. Um, you know, unless there there are new issues that arise uh, or new you know new facts that come to bear, but you know this is the the court case. You know, especially a complex case like this, it's just a lot of um, you know clerical type uh, of discovery that needs to be uh, provided uh, to the to the to the to, to the parties uh, to the court. What do you know about his guns? His guns were transferred to Nassau. Well, that's a that's a the guns are that's a subject of a separate. Uh, motion, and I believe that's being uh, heard October 2nd. Uh, so we'll have more uh, clarity on that. We're, we're seeking to have those guns uh, returned to, to Nassau. Why is it necessary to have a conference uh, in private instead of in, the, in front of a public conference? Um, you know, I, I think it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's up to the, to, to the council. Uh, really, and, and the court, uh, primarily, most of all, and, and basically, uh, what happens is there's there's discussions, and those discussions are then you know placed on the record. Uh, what is the investigation moved on to the other unsolved murders on Ocean Parkway, and whether genetic material from your men? Well, well, we've been we've been you know we, we said that initially our investigation centered around the Gilgo Four. Um, that uh, we, you know we were prepared to bring charges with regard to three of, uh, out of the four Gilgo four victims. We're working on the fourth uh, Gilgo victim, and now we, we've expanded our uh, investigation to include uh, others, other bodies that were recovered in that area. And uh, we'll speak about that when, when, and if we're prepared to bring charges. Is there DNA evidence on any of those other? There's always there's always potentially uh, DNA evidence in any case. Uh, you just have to see uh, whether or not you can take DNA or, or genetic material and compare it to a subject. So, so, you're so you're investigating all the bodies on Gilgo as being killed by the same person? We're, we're investigating other instances where, where uh, individuals were left on Gilgo. In terms, question, of, in terms of the fourth victim that has not, has not been charged yet, what is the what is the reason behind the delay in time or the time lapse of between the three and this last one? So as we said uh, right from the very beginning, uh, when we started the grand jury. Uh, investigation there was a tension between the acquisition of evidence as well as maintaining grand jury secrecy as well as uh, a public safety uh, at a certain amount uh, at a certain time in January that, that balance shifted we moved on to the three cases that we had, had completed uh, and we're continuing with uh, the, the 
investigation of the Maureen Brainerd Barnes murder, and that investigation is continuing. So uh, it takes time. Uh, I know that um, you know when you watch a, sh a show like CSI, everything gets done in an hour, but that's just not realistic. For those who are, don't have expertise, can you just explain the significance of the match between his DNA that you took after he was arrested and the so, you know, there, you know, there was the surveillance team uh, had uh, observed uh, the pizza box and were uh, confident that that was his DNA, that the, the DNA profile would be consistent with the defendant uh, because he left the, that material inside the box. And so the buccal swab just uh, erases all doubt. Uh, I know you're working with them in South Carolina. There was a missing woman that... Yeah, so we work, we work with all of our partners on all of our cases, and uh, we're ready, willing, and able to share whatever information we have. Obviously, we've amassed a lot of information with regard uh, to this particular subject, and we're sharing that with anyone who, who wants with regard to their investigations. Uh, but just as, as I wouldn't want uh, those authorities to be uh, commenting on my investigation, I'm not going to comment on theirs. I'll leave that to them. And any gauge on how long this discovery process is going to last? Are we still looking at months ahead with how much data there is? I mean, it's certainly going to be a, uh, a lengthy process, and, you know, we'll continue to work with uh, the court and, and the defense to streamline it as much as possible, but it will take, it will take months, that's for sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. So that right there was the district attorney over in Suffolk County speaking after that hearing did come to an end. We are now hearing live raw and unfiltered from the attorney for Rex Hewerman. So let's pop that up and listen in live raw and unfiltered. Uh, it's pretty significant, pretty significant. So that's what they have. Uh, so that's all I can tell you. And I have not. And, and that's assuming a lot of different things, right? Because DNA can be transferred. DNA can be transferred from me going up to the cameraman and shaking his hand and I would say he would get my hair but I have no hair but he would get my DNA and then he goes to a second person and now it's transferred so all things I'm just putting that out there but going back to inclusive versus exclusive it's still a significant amount of people that could be the source of, of this hair but anyway any other questions okay, so Yeah, so initially there was a protective order that we agreed to, <clears throat> which had a couple of things in it that were troubling to us. Number one is there's a watermark across every single piece of evidence, uh, every photograph. It's troubling because we want to obviously print out some of these items and utilize it to our benefit at trial. In addition, the photographs that they provided were in a... Uh, in a I don't know what you in a PDF fashion. So PDF is much less clear than a digital photograph. So we wanted everything digital because when you enlarge things digitally, you can see much more detail. That's going to be important for us. So those are two of the things that we're now getting. Uh, I don't know if there's any other significant portions of the protective order that were amended, but those were two significant parts. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk about um, your client was asked if he was taking advantage of his right to review? Everything that you get? He is. He is. So what happened was we went to the court. We went to Justice Maisie and we asked for a court order. Uh, we wanted a court order because we wanted to enable him the opportunity to review all the discovery while he's in custody. Uh, Justice Maisie signed that and the sheriff is now abiding by that order and he's permitting my client to review the discovery as it trickles in. We're providing it to, to him and he's reviewing the discovery. And how is his mood and demeanor now? Well, he's somebody who was, has, from the beginning, has said he's not guilty. So he's now incarcerated. He's a, a fellow who was working, has never been arrested, has a wife and children, is a productive member of society. And obviously the, the district attorney, the government is making these allegations and they're horrific. But if he's not guilty of this, well, now he has to sit in custody, be away from his family, be away from his wife and kids, not work, not produce. Uh, for his family and support them and sit in a jail cell until this case can come to fruition. So he's doing the best he can. Uh, the sheriff made a comment about how he's not making any, uh, any emotions. 
right? And, and I know the press ran with that and said, oh, look, he's not showing emotions. Well, I, I have to tell you that when I first started on this case, I made it a point to tell him, just get through this, Rex. Get through this. Get to the point where we can go to trial and don't show emotion. Don't let anything upset you. Just be stoic. And that's what he's done. And then we saw a comment, unfortunately, and I have a, a lot of respect for Sheriff Tulon, but the sheriff made a comment about he's not showing emotion. And from that, I can tell you there's something wrong with him. Well, that, that's just not the case. That's just sensationalism, and that, that's just things that, unfortunately, uh, poison the jury pool. That's not true. So the answer to your question is he's doing the best he can at this point. Has he been in touch with Asa or children? They do communicate, yes. They, yes, sir. What's your experience working with the data? Was it the table of contents? Was it you working with the organizer? In terms, which data are you referring well, they, to? This is eight terabytes to start with that. The eight terabytes. So initially we got four external hard drives. 99% of those four external hard drives was what's called poll cameras. What the DA's office did is they set, and the police department, I should say, they had poll cameras focused on my client's house from a year and a half prior up until the date of the arrest. What that shows, and this defies common sense that he is actually the murderer, what the poll cameras show is a guy who gets up in the morning, he goes to work, he comes home, he spends time with his wife and children, you see him chopping wood, you see him hanging out on his porch, that's what you see. And that is 99% of what we got from the beginning. Yeah, so you said you've got very little actual evidence. I mean, can you expand on that? I, so, so we just talked about those, those four external hard drives. I have ME reports, uh, which are from the scene itself. Uh, they don't sh attribute in any way my client to the commission of these acts. Uh, the poll cameras, basically defy their suggestion that this is this monster of a person. Uh, when he was arrested, there was a video in the actual police vehicle. My client, unless he's a tremendous actor, he was completely shocked, had no idea why he was being taken into custody, and there's this interaction. Uh, so they don't tell you, the government doesn't tell you about these things, but this, these are things we're going to bring out during the course of the trial. You said 99% of what you've reviewed is poll cameras? I, what I had said was in the first four uh, external hard drives, I am going to say, I'm going to say that there's about 99% of that uh, was the poll camera video. Correct. So you've been given very little indication of what their actual case is at this point? I think that you folks have, have received what I've received, which is that bail, the bail letter, which says there's a pizza crust, and then they talked about burner phones, and they talked about pinging uh, in New York City. That's what I've seen uh, in terms of the bail letter. Pinging in New York City, I mean, you, you folks know how the ping works, and there's probably hundreds of thousands of people that are pinging off that cell site at any given time. Uh, that's all I've seen. How is Rex doing right now? How is Rex doing right now? Go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. Given that and the fact that he's got two to three hours at a cliff sitting there going through this evidence with you, um, how, how come we're being told by the DA that it's going to be months and months and months before we get to trial? Does he want to be in jail for months and months? You're asking me. Well, I haven't gotten discovery. I'm still waiting for. So let's talk about things like this investigation was going on for 10 to 12 years. There were numerous other suspects, and you folks have reported this. There's numerous other suspects that they looked at. I want to see those records. I want to see those notes. I want to see why the police accused other people, were focusing on other people, and what it is about those individuals that caused them to discount those other individuals. I haven't seen any of that. I also want to see, obviously, the crime lab. I want to see the testing that was done. I want to make sure it was done, it was done in the right manner and fashion. None of that I have seen. Going back to your question, does Rex want to stay in custody? Of course not. Of course not. But he can't bail out. And we are not going to go to trial until we get all the discovery. And the district attorney under the law is required to provide us with all of the discovery. Do you expect him to be charged in a fourth murder? I, you'd have to ask Mr. Tierney about that. I, I have no idea. I, I have no idea. And Rex is spending two to three hours a day going through this discovery himself. Is that something he wanted to do, something that he asked you specifically if he could you know, be privy to the information? Sure. 
I mean, he, he's the defendant. He's charged. He's an intelligent man. He's never been arrested. He wants to know what, what is it that they have that they're saying I'm involved in this. So as a defense attorney, we obviously want to share that with our client. Uh, if he was out of custody, he'd probably be coming to my office and we'd review that together. Because he's in custody, we made copies uh, and we're affording him the opportunity so that he can at his leisure review these items and all the discovery and, and assist in his defense because that's what it's all about. You said most of the evidence was from the cameras. What about other evidence you've seen? Well, those four external hard drives. So again, about 99% is these uh, are these uh, whole cameras. Then you have approximately 3,000 pages deal with the ME's report when they found the bodies on each of the three occasions. Uh, we had videos again of, of him being arrested and the, what they call the takedown and him in the in the police vehicle. Uh, I think that's the extent of what I recall uh, in the in the first set in the first four external hard drives. The fifth external hard drive is voluminous. It's these phone records and computer searches, and we started to look at those, but it really doesn't make sense until we have the question and answers from the grand jury, because those are all grand jury exhibits. It's like having a car without gas. You're not gonna get anywhere. So now today, the district attorney indicated that we have gotten the grand jury testimony. So now we can put two and two together and we can review this and, and make sense of what they have and go from there.